Hello. The video you're about to see, it was shot uh, about two years ago, and we're just getting around to finally posting it on YouTube. If uh, you have to uh, bite the bullet eventually and get our first video posted, it's not very well shot. It was shot with a uh, an Nikon uh, Coolpix, I think. Uh, Audio is a little echoey, but I think the uh, content of the video is is worth watching. Um, and uh, hold it up. This one comes this one. Oh. Oh yeah, you're bent. You're bent. Not good. This one, why is this one so tight? Yeah, tight, yeah. I'll lay this down. Oh. That's good. You feel this? Yeah, I see it. Feel how loose that is? Yeah. So that's not right. Now, with the... Wiggle it again. That is not good. No. I did something now, bad. there's two nuts on here. One nut holds the upper tree to the spindle. Mm -hmm. But there's a nut underneath this that compresses or applies preload to the to the bearings. Alright. So if I take this nut off, right, nice big nut, and I slip this off, you see there's metal shaving. Is not? Or did that come off here? Come off here. Um, you see, there's this nut, and this is loose also. So this is the this is the this is not as loose as the top one was, but this is loose too. So you can see there's a little movement. You can hear it. Yeah. Okay. So this preload has to be taken up to get that slop out of that. You don't need a lot. You don't have to tighten it. There is probably, if we look in a book, there probably is a torque setting for that, but it's probably less than 20 foot pounds. It's probably on the order of about, you know, you know, 15, 18 inch pounds. It's not a lot. It's just enough to to handle whatever flex might occur in in these parts when you're under underway. Yeah. All right. Make it too tight, and you'll wear the bearing. Um, okay, so we tighten that up a little bit. To do that, we need to yes. It. You want to see what it looks like? It looks just like just like on a bicycle, except on a bicycle usually the cone is part of this nut. Here, the cone is separate, and there's the bearing ring underneath. Okay. That bearing ring looks a little dry. I mean, it could be it could be better greased, but it's it's what it is. Yeah. If you want to take it all apart and clean it, solvent, repack the bearings with grease, put it all back together, there's certainly nothing wrong with with doing that. Now. Here you got a bigger problem, and almost any reputable bike shop will tell you if you've got a bent fork tube, you throw it away, and you go buy a new fork tube. I need a Phillips, and you go buy new fork tubes, but they're very expensive. How expensive is very? Uh, probably a couple hundred bucks for a set of tubes. Um. However, 
If this was a fine antique firearm with a bent barrel, even a new barrel in the factory, they straighten them. Now this one, the reason why I'm taking the boot off is because I want to be able to rotate this freely. The proper way to do this is you clamp this. Actually, the proper way to do this is to remove the tube and put it on a set of B-blocks and rotate it in the B-blocks with a dial indicator in the machine shop. That's the right way to do it. Quick way to do it is just to hold on to this nice and firmly so it's not wiggling around. You want to brace it against your knee or something, whatever you like. And just give it a turn and see if the top wobbles around on you. Top doesn't wobble around, then you know the tube is straight, or reasonably straight. Straight enough for for your purposes. Now if you flip this around and look at the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. This should have a little grease on it too, just to prevent water from wicking up between the metal and the rubber. All right. Okay. Just, just a light film. Just a. You don't even need to do that. I don't. No, I just wanted to. It's just as long as this can t rotate. Oh, right. A little bit then. Now, if I recall, this was bent. Yeah. Definitely okay. bent. So this is really bent. Badly. This is not good. We need to straighten this out. Now, at this point, thousands of people on YouTube are saying, you can't straighten that. Ah, you're crazy at it. Well, we can't straighten it out. And anybody who's into gunsmithing will know that barrels can be straightened. Is the camera even on you? Okay, yeah, it is. Anything can be straightened. It's just a matter of to what level of accuracy and what technique is going to be employed. But it can be done. In our case, our technique is a 20 ton hydraulic press. Back when I was a boy. Yeah, you know, that sort of thing. The gun barrels that were made to shoot buffalo at hundreds and hundreds of yards back in the day started out as a puddle of molten iron and I can assure you that they did not have the benefits of modern laser guided metrology to straighten them barrels. A little, a little tiny bit of lubrication would help here, but you know, we don't have that out here. Being a hundred yards from the shop, out in the barn, Where's these these things are not readily available. Where's it's nice and hot. It's like 80 degrees. Open the open the door. It's like 80 degrees today. Now the thing is, you gotta look where it's bent. Find out where it's bent. Well, the bend usually takes an arc at some point, and it looks like it's bent from the lower tree down, which means we also want to give the lower tree a good inspection. Make sure we don't have any cracks or twists or bends in that too. But we'll we'll do that a little later. In fact, we'll do that on a on a surface plate. Riding my motorcycle, 101. All right, at this point, we're going to stop the video and get this uh, this tube out of the shock so we can get it in the press. Because you all don't want to see that because that's only going to take a whole hour and a half. No, it's just boring. Not like it's been exciting to this point, though. See you later.
Did you bring that rollabout seat out here? No, I forgot to. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all right. This is going to be too short for this anyway. All right, so what we got here, what we got here is <clears throat> a bent shock. And maybe if I go like this, you can see how bent it is. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it pretty good. It's pretty obvious, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, anatomy of a shock. You start by taking the screw, the uh, spring retaining bolt out of the top, which is sealed with an O-ring, because this is a hydraulic system. And hydraulic systems always have to be kept absolutely clean. Now, we've already had this apart. We've taken all the oil out of it. But shocks can... They hold a few ounces of oil in the bottom. I want to put this down in my, my tool tray here. And in the bottom, there is a bolt which holds, um, <clears throat> I don't know what the name of it is, you can look it up. Um, but there's a, a piece in the bottom which forms a piston inside of this. You have two pistons. You have, this is a piston. This is a cylinder. And then when you pull this out, the inside of this and this form another piston and cylinder. So you end up with a closed system in the bottom of this fork leg full of oil. And for anything to move, the oil must go through these little tiny holes in the bottom and that's what keeps it from bouncing up and down freely. Gives you the proper dampening. Not dampening, damping. Damping of your system. And what a lot of people don't realize initially is that the suspension, the shock absorbing components, dampen the movement of the unsprung weight. The un unsprung weight is right there on the floor. That's your wheel. These tubes are part of the unsprung weight. Everything above that that's moving, the bike, the rider, the engine, everything else, that's sprung weight. That's not what the damping does. The damping does not dampen the movement of that. It dampens the movement of the wheel. Um, dampen it properly and the wheel stays on the ground or as best we can. Really? Okay. Assuming this is not bent or cracked or having some other issues, which we, we doubt it does, we'll just put that aside. I'm going to put this in with it. And this little... Yay, box so important parts. Keep all our parts together. That thing's important. And keep everything that thing's important. And I do not know what that thing is. Okay. Like I said earlier, this is a hydraulic system, which means everything has to be super clean. Absolutely clean. You have, if you feel any grit or dirt at any time, you have to do some cleaning. Lots of fresh solvent, lots of clean hydraulic fluid. Any grit or dirt on your hands, so you got a problem. Clean, clean, clean. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to set up, we went over to the shop, and we brought out to the barn some simple V blocks. They don't need to be fancy. They need to be reasonably symmetrical. They need to be clean. And we're going to do a little little bit of measuring on this puppy here. Now, for the purposes of this, to prevent scratches, these are chrome plated. These are almost always chrome plated steel, which means they're pretty hard on the surface, but we still don't want any scratches on them. Um, so we're going to take some of these nice clean terry cloth pieces here and that's not a clean one, that's a clean one. Yeah, 
You realize the sound is probably going to suck on this because I'm 10 feet away. Now, we're going to set the V blocks up so that they're. Whoa, can we see that? You want to zoom in on that? It is. Okay. You're on the bench? You zoomed in on the bench? Yeah, it's the bench. Okay, you can see that's got quite a wobble to it. Now, what we want to do is find out where does the wobble start? We want to know exactly where our bend is, begins and ends. So, what we've got here is a, yeah, an indicator gauge, which, may, which is calibrated in thousandths of an inch. Clamp that to our bench top. Must be a Chinese magnet. Okay. And we're going to make some minor adjustments here. And we're going to read, oh, I don't know, maybe we'll adjust it to read a few thousands. Okay. Now, our, okay, that's close enough. So I'm going to rotate this, and you, we see that it goes up and down. So we're, we're past the point where it's bent. So if I bring this over a little more. And now I can rotate this. Let me take the towels out of here. My v I know my V-box are, are clean. I don't, I'm not going to worry about scratching the chrome. But if I rotate this in the V-block, I see relatively little deflection. Probably no more deflection than if I just lean on the wood. Okay, so... So I'm going to slide this down a little bit in the blocks, and I see now I'm starting to see some deflection. Okay, so I'm going to mark that right about there as a, an area where it starts to bend, and treat everything below that as relatively straight. So I'm not, when I put this in the press, I'm not going to put my V-blocks way out here. I'm going to keep them close to this mark because I don't want anything beyond that to, to be bent by what we're going to try to do. Um, if I come up to this end, I can see there's a, there's a very distinct mark where it was forced against the tree, and the tree put a little crease line in there. So I know that there might be a little bit of bend above that, but probably not very much. I could try to figure that out by reversing what I just did on the other end. Come around this way. This is hard because I'm dealing with a very short section now. But we'll try to hold that in place. Get the junk out of the way here. Rotate it there, and sure enough, if as I'm rotating it there, I see no significant indication. If I go a little bit more, slide it over some more, I should begin to see some, I still see no indication. So it's pretty straight above that point. So above that point where it's marked by the block, it's pretty straight, so I'm just going to put a, put a mark you know, in that vicinity as well. I'm going to mark this. Okay, so now we know that this area here, which I'm trying to mark up, this is the area where the bend resides, between here and here, largely. So now we're going to go over to our press, and we're going to try to press most of that bend out. Okay, so we're set up <coughs> at the 
press here. It's a 20 ton hydraulic press. Like I said, you don't need fancy equipment. If I had a air over hydraulic press, you know, it might make it easier, but it does make it a little more precise. And sometimes having the tactile feedback is is uh, a little better than power equipment. So we've set up our V-box again. I've got the V-box positioned just outside of those red marks I made, so I'm not bending anything that's already straight. So I just got just the bent portion under the ram. And it's real important that things be padded now because with any round, especially round objects, you're basically dealing with a few points of contact. And we want to spread that out so we don't dent the metal. It's just soft steel underneath, it's not chrome. So we want to pad it there. Um, you can use cloth, you can use wood. Ideally, uh, something like lead or Babbitt material or even you know, solder, good 50 50 solder will, will, will work. But you want to distribute the forces as best as possible. On top here, I've got a piece of uh, that expanded PVC uh, architectural plastic. It's going to deform and crunch and get all uh, munged up here, but it's better than putting a dent in our uh, shock tube. So we're going to start coming down on this now. I positioned it at the high point, trying to get everything positioned just right, otherwise it's going to want to roll on you. And we start compressing. So right now I'm compressing a lot of a lot of towel and plastic. And when I start straightening the tube, I'll see this far end will start coming up. So I want to keep my hand there and just feel for rotation or lifting as I come down on this. I just split my plastic. And the tube is just starting to come up now. So I'm starting to get a little flex on the metal. Not much. Let me get this out of my way. Let's move the camera a little bit closer. So that can look. And I can see I still have an arch in it. I hope all you viewers out there enjoy that look because I do. Now, I didn't give you the usual YouTube safety lecture on safety glasses and uh, gloves and eye protection and hearing protection and everything else. I assume you all know that. You're working with 20 tons of force and dangerous, hard, heavy pieces of steel. Things split, they crack, they break. You can get hurt. And my it's dad's, not my fault. And my dad's got his face near it. Brilliant. Okay, that looks pretty straight to me, but I'm going to go a tiny bit more because I know it's going to spring back. <laughs> and we're going to release it. And we're going to take a look. Exciting. Let's see what we got. Okay. A funny noise. What we have here is a not quite yet straight, but, but a whole lot straighter. So we're going to put it back in. We're going to do just a little bit more squeezing as you're pleasing. Can I see that? Okay, i got to find my high spot again. That's when I go inside and download all this to the computer, and then we continue. Is this camera stink? By the way, it's pretty much our first video ever. Boom! Oh, a little side shift there, and I lifted it. For those of you that want to know, that was not your headphones or speakers, that was the machine. Love sound effects. 
You did straight. Well, I'm going to go a little more. In fact, what I'm going to do... I'm going to point towards the camera. Maybe I can pick it up. Is I'm going to shift my force a little bit down this way. That looks pretty straight to me. Yeah, it's pretty straight. But it could be a little straighter. Ooh. Pushing the limits. Getting risky. Just. We're back. It's been minutes or seconds for you. It's been hours for us. Two. Because my brother didn't give us the camera cable and changed the password on my okay, we, uh, computer account. We cleared we cleared the memory on the camera, so um we're back from the press. We're done with the press. We did a little more a little more, a little more bending and tweaking and touch ups. And I'm checking the run out now. And the run out from about the, over about three fifths of this lane is about ten thousand. And if I bring if I bring the blocks in to just where I had marked my lines where the bends begin, um, it's actually it's actually about there we go. It's about five thousand. Five thousandths will less run out, and uh, that's good. Yeah, it, it's we've reduced it over ninety percent, and if you if uh, you look at this uh, uh, this way, you can zoom in a little bit. But yeah. If you look at this this way, you can see this tube is quite straight compared to what it was when we started, and we haven't put any dents in it. We haven't nicked it. Use proper padding on our blocks. It's very important. Do not do what we did without some sort of protection above it. You do not just go metal on metal. You go okay. with something over it to make sure you protect it. So now we're going to put that back in there. I'm going to take my uh, take my gauge. <clears throat> this is the one instrument that you you do want to take you know care of. Again, not not super precision. I have electronic instrumentation for that in the house, but we don't have any power out here, so. We got a generator, but that's allowed. Now well, well, let's get this puppy back together. Yay, so I can go riding again. Um, in the and now we're going to put the spring back in. And we're going to Put our oil back. AKA nasty blue stuff that no one likes to smell. Okay, that is fork oil, basically hydraulic oil, and if you significantly change the weight of your wheel or rim, you may need to change it to go to a lighter or a heavier oil. I believe this is uh, 15, could be 7, oh it's 19, 20? Oh no, 17. This has an O-ring, so it really doesn't need to be any tighter than to keep it from backing out under vibration. Um, you don't need to torque this down like a submarine hatch. And it'll work some of the air out of the piston. It's going to sound really squishy. Let me get to the camera. You can hear this thing squish. It's pretty squishy. That's a delightful noise. Yeah, but the air will the air will work out of it. Eventually. Back. I 
another deck. And what? You might want to remember this. Yes. This. And right. Stop this. Video. We'll be back. All right. Um. All now right. that the bike's back together, we're putting the final touches on it. All right. We're just finishing up here. Here's what we did. We put the uh, put put the wheel and everything back together, put all the parts back in the triple tree. However, there's four bolts, two on the top, two on the bottom, as well as this nut on the very top holding the top tree on. The um, in order to get these in order to get these forks aligned, which is really important, the forks have to be parallel. Um, they should be parallel all the way from the very top to the very bottom. But there is some play in these lower fork tubes. So try to take those out of the equation. If you have the upper fork tubes parallel, that's what's really important. And the best way to do that is if you clamp a block of steel. In this case, I'm using a piece of uh, aluminum. But it's a, it comes off of a precision uh, machine shop jig plate doesn't have to be precision steel. You can even use you can even use a piece of this expanded polyurethane. It's not very rigid. It's got a little flex in it, but for this purpose it'll probably be strong enough and it certainly is quite flat. Um, but you need a nice flat surface. You want to clamp them to your to your uh, fork tubes here so that they parallel they come right up parallel and then you tighten all your nuts and bolt into the triple tree. We, uh, before we even put the top of the tree on with the handlebars, we, we adjusted the preload on the steering bearings. So now we take this off and nothing moves. There's no shift, there's no, there's no spring back. Everything is exactly where it is. You see a nice thick piece of aluminum. And with that, Everything's tightened up, ready to go. We've adjusted our uh, boot clearance here, brakes, and uh, we give it a test run. Yeah. Of course, that's assuming he can start it. I Come didn't on. Have, I didn't have the key on. You can start right up when the key's turned on. It helps. Okay, give it a quick spin around, see how it feels. Well, that was our first video, and uh, hopefully it will be the uh, seed of uh, more and better products to come um, on a variety of topics, and uh, hopefully we'll intersperse each one with, uh, as the channel is titled, incidental information of, uh, of value or, or some interest or humor or what have you. And um, thanks for watching.